Tov, everyone. This is the House of Seven Beggars Synagogue. And this is Kinder News with Zeta for Yom Revi. I am your announcer, Rabbi Ariel Nachman Ben Chaim. And now, here is the news with Zeta. Erev Tov and welcome to the House of Seven Beggars. It is 8 p.m. here on the east coast of the United States, here in the diaspora. It is Yom Revi'i, the 13th day of the month of Sivan, of the year 5773 from creation. Or Tuesday, May 21st, 2013. And this is Kinder News with Zeda. I am your host, Zeda Benari. And now, here with the news. New technology allows diners to check kosher certification themselves. This is from Arut Sheva. Religious services officials in Tel Aviv have introduced a new service that allows diners to check a restaurant's kosher certification for themselves. This service is aimed at preventing kosher fraud in which restaurants print fake certificates when in fact there is no guarantee that the food served there is kosher. Visitors can scan the code and check the certification themselves using a kosher checker application available for download. A 24-hour line provides a second opinion. Those who cannot or do not wish to use the application can call the local kosher hotline and give the barcode number to the establishment they wish to check, and they will be told whether or not the certificate is genuine. Religious Council member Eldad Mizrahi explained the new service and said it is the most technologically advanced kosher certification service currently in existence. This app for the phone is called Kosher Test. And you can download it from Google Play. You know, I have this one on my very own phone. Canada says the West needs to be more supportive of Israel. And this is from Israel Today. Canada last week once again demonstrated its full support and friendship with Israel when Prime Minister Stephen Harper took other Western leaders to task for not backing the Jewish state sufficiently enough. There is nothing more short-sighted in Western capitals in our time than the softening of support we have seen for Israel around the globe. The Associated Press quoted Harper as saying during a visit to New York last week. The Canadian leader said that at a time of such turmoil, Israel has demonstrated that it is one stable democratic ally and that the West can count on in the Middle East. Harper went on to counsel extraordinary caution when considering whether or not the West should arm Syrian rebel groups, echoing Israel's own concerns. Harper noted that many of the groups making up the Syrian Free Army are themselves extremists, whose objectives we don't understand. And now it is time for This Week in Jewish History. For the week of 10 Sivan 5773, and this one is from Chabad. Sunday, Kolonimus Wolf Witsotsky, the son of poor parents, established the Witsotsky Tea Company in 1849 and became known as the King of Russian Tea. 
He was a great Jewish philanthropist and called for the settlement of Jews in Israel while initiating the move of Jews to Lord Nablus and Gaza. In his will, he left over a million rubles to charity. In 1936, Witsatsky Tea became the first tea company in Palestine and has since become the leading tea company in Israel. Monday is the art site of the Michatz Yitzhak, 1989. Rabbi Yitzhak Yaakov Weiss, also known as the Michatz Yitzhak, was born in Galicia in 1902. He headed the court of Jewish law, the Beit Din, in Grosvalden, Romania, before World War II. And after miraculously surviving the war, he assumed the same position in Manchester, England. After the Shoah, he worked diligently on aiding the many Jewish women whose husbands had disappeared during the war. He did this to find a halachic way which allowed the woman to remarry according to Jewish law since they did not know if their husbands were alive or dead. He passed away on the 11th of Sivan. An estimated 30,000 people attended his funeral. Tuesday. Today is the end of Shavuot fulfillment days. When the Beit HaMikdash stood in Yerushalayim, and all Jews would come there for the three annual pilgrimage festivals, which are Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Shivan 12 was the last of the seven days allowed for the Bikurim brought in conjunction with the Shavuot pilgrimage. Unlike the festivals of Pesach and Sukkot, which have seven biblical mandated days, Shavuot consists only of one day, hence the additional six days of Tashlumim, or fulfillment. Wednesday, Moshe goes up Har Sinai in 1313 BCE. Moshe ascended Har Sinai in order to receive from God the remainder of the Torah, the remaining commandments and the oral law. After being cleansed by the clouds for six days, he was allowed into the presence of God on the 13th of Sivan. Thursday, Jewish books spared from destruction in 1510. In 1509, Emperor Maximilian of Germany ordered that all Jewish books in the cities of Cologne and Frankfurt on Main be destroyed. The Jews appealed to the emperor to reconsider this edict and Maximilian agreed to investigate the matter. The emperor rescinded his edict on the 14th of Sivan in 1510. Friday is the birth and the passing of Judah. Judah, the fourth son of Yaakov and Leah, was born in Haran in the, on the 15th of Sivan in the year 2196 from creation. He passed away on the same date 119 years later, in Mitzrayim. Judah took the leadership role both in selling Yosef into slavery and in his brother's later attempts to find him and free him, and to protect Benjamin. On his deathbed, Yaakov conferred the leadership of Israel upon Judah, proclaiming, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the legislature from between his feet, until the Moshiach comes, may he come soon and in our days, the royal house of David, as well as many of the great sages and leaders of Israel throughout the generations of Jewish history trace their lineage to Judah. Also on Friday, shortly after midnight on the 15th, of Sivan in 1927, the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson, was arrested by agents of the Soviet secret police and the Jewish section of the Communist Party. What was his crime? 
for leading the underground network of rabbis, teachers, and emissaries working to preserve and spread Jewish learning and observance throughout the Soviet Empire. The Parsha this week for Shabbos is Baha'al Alutecha, Numbers chapter 8, verse 1 through chapter 12, verse 16. So here is what is happening in our Torah portion. Aharon is commanded to raise light in the lamps on the menorah, and the tribe of Levi is initiated into the service of the sanctuary. A second Passover is started because of a group of Jews who were unable to bring the Passover offering on Passover because they were ritually impure. They asked Moshe, why should we be deprived? Also, God instructs Moshe on the procedures for Israel's journey and encampment in the desert and the people journey in formation from Har Sinai where they had camped for nearly a year. The people are unhappy with their bread from heaven, the manna, and the man that Moshe supplied them with meat. Moshe appoints 70 leaders to assist him in the burden of governing the people. Boy, did you say something there. So, God imparts some of Moshe's spirit to them. Miriam speaks negatively of Moshe and is punished with leprosy. Moshe prays for her healing, and the entire community waits seven days for her recovery. And the Haftorah this week comes from Zechariah chapter 2, verse 14 to chapter 4, verse 7. And since this week we read about our people who were not satisfied with the food God had given them, I picked a cartoon about not having any food to eat. So here is Woody Woodpecker cartoon called Banquet Busters. Hey! And it also has Andy Panda in it. Yes, who?
find it interesting that people would be given food from God and then complain? Well, as you can see, Woody and his pals had nothing. This should be something we should remember next time we don't like what is on for dinner, hey? Eh? Okay, and now back to the news. Early rains interrupt Shavuot, and this is again from Israel Today. The festival of Shavuot is a late spring event that rarely, if ever, sees any rain in Israel. But this year, the holiday was a wet one, indeed. Hmm, the early rains and the ra late rains, huh? Israel typically flocks to the national parks to celebrate Shavuot, but the attendance on Wednesday was way down as heavy rains and thunderstorms forced many to mark the holiday at home. In the northern Jezreel Valley, all holiday events had to be canceled, and the port city of Haifa experienced serious flooding. A number of cars, shops, and homes were damaged by water. While most tried to minimize the damage and stay safe, some took advantage of the situation to enjoy a few laps around the city in their kayaks. In the area of the Dead Sea, rescue crews had to save six people, including three children, who had become trapped by the flash floods. This is real winter, said one meteorologist. It looks as if it were February and not May. One positive side of the surprise rain was that the Sea of Galilee, Israel's largest freshwater reservoir, began to rise again after most had expected it to settle into its long summer evaporation. And finally, in the news, Israel doctors saved Syrian girl's life 
And this is from Ynet. Four-year-old suffering from deadly heart condition was successfully operated on in an Israeli hospital. We can show Syrians and the world we want peace, says the surgeon. After a hard journey, a four-year-old Syrian girl was successfully operated for a deadly heart condition in the Israeli Edith Wolfson Medical Center in Halon. Without the surgery, she could have died within a few months, maybe even weeks, said the surgeon, Dr. Leon Sasson. It's uplifting to perform surgery on a child from a hostile country. We can show Syrians and the world we look for peace. The child's journey began three and a half years ago when an examination in Syria revealed her heart had only one ventricle instead of two, causing her chronic fatigue, weakness, and short of breath, critically endangering her life. When the Syrian civil war broke out, her mother realized that to save her daughter, the family had no choice but to leave the country and seek help for the girl from abroad. Half a year ago, they moved to Jordan, from which the mother appealed to American Christian Association and pleaded for their help. The group then approached the Israeli Save a Child's Heart Foundation and with Interior Minister Gideon Sa'ar approval, the mother and her sick child arrived in Israel a few days ago for the complex open heart surgery in the Israeli hospital which specializes in such cases. The operation was a success. The girl is currently recuperating before she returns to Jordan. At first, I feared the Syrian regime's response to our coming here, said the mother. Naturally, I myself was afraid to come to Israel. But the moment I arrived, I felt at ease. The doctor treated me and my girl nicely. Save a Child's Heart Foundation director Simon Fisher said the foundation has already helped more than 3,200 children from 44 countries worldwide. Bringing a child from an enemy state is an uneasy feat, which requires coordination between many groups. The child's operation was made possible thanks to the support of Minister Sa'ar. And that, my kinderlach, is the news for this week. For the House of Seven Beggars Synagogue, the rabbi, and myself, Laila Tov, and good night!